Hi, I'm Kevin Scott with 100 Huntley Street, and I'm joined today by my friend Justin Miller, who's one of the founders of Care for Aid. Justin, it's great to be with you this morning. Thanks, Kevin. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. So tell us this story. Care for AIDS, you're a guy from North America that is now passionate about something that is so, so far away. How did you get this passion? Well, it's, a, it's an unexpected story because, as you said, I grew up in a very privileged culture. Um, and I'd never been exposed to HIV and AIDS. I'd never met anyone that suffered from it. And the, the catalyst that really set me on this journey to this, start this organization actually took place at a leadership conference in Chicago called the Willow Creek Leadership Summit. And in 2006, I was there and I heard Bono give an interview with Bill Hybels about the church's role in caring for those people that are affected by HIV and AIDS. And, um, he spoke with great conviction about the, the apathy and the disregard that the church had towards this issue. But instead of leaving that event feeling that I was discouraged or disappointed in the church, I, I realized that, that I needed to answer that question for myself. What can my church do to care for those affected by HIV and AIDS? And before I could look to the church and expect anything else, I needed to know you know, what does the landscape look like? Who's out there helping the church navigate this issue that quite frankly affects families and affects culture at such a deep level that it's a very complex issue. And so I left that conference feeling like I needed to go and see it for myself. I needed to answer the question, what is the church's role in the US and Canada and in, in the West to help come alongside the churches in Kenya and, and all of Africa for that matter to respond to this issue of HIV and AIDS. Okay, so you decide you're gonna head over there and you get on a plane, travel to a, a long way away to Nairobi, Kenya, and tell me about what happens. Yeah, so we get on a plane with some buddies of mine. We're, we're 19 at the time, we're incredibly naive. Uh, my parents are petrified that we're leaving the country with, with really no adult supervision. And my mom always says like, I hope between you there's one good brain. And, and so we get on this plane, and, but thankfully, through a series of meetings that had, had been held before that trip, we get to Kenya and we're met by two guys off the plane whose names are Cornell and Duncan. And who knew what would actually become of this relationship? At the time, they were just the tour guides that were gonna take us around the country for a month, and they were gonna show us um, the, the situations in the slums and in the rural villages where people were affected by HIV and AIDS. So the month unfolded, um, hundreds of conversations with people um, on the streets and people in the highest public offices talking about what is the situation with HIV and what do we do about it. And as the trip progressed, um, not only were there some, some things that became crystal clear about the church in Kenya, but we realized that we were in perfect alignment in vision and purpose with these two men, Cornell and Duncan, and realized that God had purposed much more for us than just what we thought initially, which was to produce a documentary about care for it, or about the HIV AIDS crisis in Africa. So these guys show up and they're really, their job is to take you around. And, and through conversation, you end up finding out that they had a vision for their country and their people and, and specifically this community. Absolutely, and you know, I can't stress enough that you know, this vision would have, have never gone past that first trip if it wasn't for the national leadership of Cornell and Duncan. And I think that's critical for any ministry success is that you need people who you can trust and who are gonna lead well, um, and they're gonna lead their own people. And this vision had been stirring in them for uh, really since they were children, but at least for the last five years before we got there, they had started putting pen to paper to say, this is what I think God is calling us to do. I think the Kenyan church has a bigger role to play in caring for these people, and we need to figure out what that is. And they just took that piece of paper and they prayed over it, and they just continued to refine it, and they kept it in a drawer. And by the time our trip ended, Duncan felt like there was enough of a relationship and enough rapport that he said, hey, Justin, I wanna share with you what it is God has put on our heart to do. Um, I, don't, I don't know what your response will be to that. And, and I said, you know, count me in. I, I wanna be part of this vision, helping it come to reality. And, um, and that was seven years ago now. So this, this series of events that God orchestrated to bring you two together, and I think what's so cool to me about the Care for AIDS model is how you guys engage local churches to be a part of, of the fight against HIV and AIDS and to help be there for these people. Tell, it, tell me how that works, because a lot of times my understanding is that the individuals with HIV and AIDS view this, the church as 
someone who doesn't want them or doesn't accept them. Yeah, well, you know, I, when this whole journey started, uh, I really buy into this belief, and it's something that Bill Hybels, um, who's been just someone I've looked up to and learned from over the years, he, he always says this, and he says, you know, I, I believe the local church is the hope of the world. It is God's plan A, and there is no plan B. And so when we went into this trip, we were like, we can't, we can't do this apart from the local church because we really think this is what the church was created to do, was to bring healing and reconciliation, not just in spiritual matters, but also in, in the physical and social and economic brokenness of our world. And so we get there, and the church has gained quite a bad reputation among some people because the church um, have been the people in the community that have been identifying people with HIV. They've been labeling them as prostitutes. They've told them that you're no longer welcome in our, in our, in our community, in our congregation. And, and the worst of all, that you've committed a sin that God cannot forgive. And, and that's kind of what we perceived to be the, case, the state of the Kenyan church. But when we got there, we realized that, in fact, there was hundreds of churches throughout Kenya that were ready and re willing to take the next step in caring for these people that had been marginalized in their community, but they were just ill-equipped and under-resourced to do so. But they were hungry for a partner to come in and say, teach us how to do this because we care about these people and we really, really want to connect with them. And, uh, and so we said, you know, the church is, this is in fact the way in which we're going to reach these people because ultimately uh, we do want to make the church the hero because in our, the communities where we work, unfortunately, if they perceive, people perceive the church is unwilling or unable to help, they perceive God in the same way. And, you know, what a tragedy that people perceive that we worship a God that is unwilling or unable to meet the needs that they have in their lives. And so by working through the local church, we can bring people into the local church, provide for all these different needs they have, but also build a relationship so we can tell them about who Jesus Christ is. Justin, tell me about uh, somebody you've met or some a, a client of Care for AIDS whose life has been impacted. Well, the story that comes to mind, and it's just it's just fresh because I was thinking about it yesterday. But uh, it's it's actually a woman named Lucy, and it's an interesting story because Lucy actually passed away about 18 months after our program. Um, and we've been what our program does it enables our clients to live for another 25 or 30 years on average after they go through our program because they've been equipped with the right tools and skills. But Lucy's just one of those people that um, I, I tried to see every time I went because we built a great friendship, but every time I met, I left feeling so uplifted and inspired by, by her story. And, and she came to the church, had no clue you know, who Jesus Christ was, and she was in a, a very desperate physical state. And, uh, as we walked with her through this transformation, you know, she had addiction problems and she was released from all that because of uh, the program and eventually her giving her life to Christ. And even, even in the program, she got a job as a community health worker in the community, working with children, educating them and teaching them about, about HIV and AIDS. And uh, what's so significant about her story is it's one we've told time and time again, and it continues to inspire people, but she unexpectedly passed away. And, and that will happen, but we know that we've left her with um, the greatest gift that we could, which is her personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, it just brings a sense of urgency to what we do because we know that um, none of us know, you know when it is our time will be up, but um, people with HIV, if there's not an intervention uh, at the point where Care Phrase comes in and tries to help uh, these people, then it could be a matter of months before they're no longer um, on this planet. Justin, you talk about uh, this concept of orphan prevention. And so in, in the North American context, a lot of times we think about Africa and we think about children and how do we help orphans, which is a very worthy cause. What I think is so cool about Care for AIDS is you guys are helping give parents the opportunity to raise their own kids. Tell us about what that looks like. Yeah, it, it's an interesting concept. It's one that we didn't know about when we went to Kenya in the first place. But we, we got there and, and realized that, you know, times have changed in the last 20 years. And whereas HIV was perceived, and in most cases was a death sentence in, in Africa, today with proper care and, and medication and treatment, you can live for another 25 or 30 years. And so there has been so many orphans created over the last 20 years. There's a great need to continue to to educate and house and adopt the children that have been orphaned by this crisis. But at the same time, there's over 1.5 million people still living with HIV AIDS 
in Kenya. And if we were to, to intervene on the behalf of a parent who has on average three, four or five kids, um, we're gonna ensure that parent can then take care of and educate their children for the next 20, 25 years. And we needed, we wanted to take on a response that was, um, well, it wasn't a response. It was actually proactive in nature as opposed to just reacting to the situation of orphans. And so we find ourselves in a space that there's not, not a lot of other people working in right now, but we just think that empowering a parent and, and the opportunity to preserve a family and keep them together is, is just one of the greatest gifts we can give. Tell us about some of the success with Care for Age. How, how many people have you been able to reach? Well, it, it has been amazing in the last six years what God has done able, been able to do through this ministry. Uh, we currently have 23 centers in Kenya that are located in the most high-risk urban slums throughout the country. And as I said earlier, each of these centers is based inside a local church. And uh, each of those centers is staffed by two workers. So our total staff in country is 60 full-time Kenyan staff. And we don't take that for granted because those people are going home with a paycheck uh, to take care of their families, educate their kids. And they're also coming to do what they're called to do each and every day, which is care for those affected by HIV and AIDS. So to date, we've graduated over 4,000 families from our program. It's a nine month program that they go through and it's, it's intended to help and all these different facets of life that we want to care for. And those families represent over 13,000 children that will eventually, will now be able to go to school and go home to a mother or a father who will be able to nurture them and grow them and, and hopefully introduce them to Jesus Christ throughout their life. And so that's, it's, it's just an incredible success. Justin, you're an amazing young leader. What you guys are doing is incredible and I'm personally passionate about it. So I'm thankful for that. I, I, I went on an impact trip to Africa with you earlier this year. What are other ways that people, what can, how can the viewers get involved? Well, I would say first, I mean, everyone where they are, they can be praying for this, this issue. Um, it's an issue that is not really on the radar of uh, the, just the global news these days. It's kind of a thing of days past, but we're at a, a very critical crossroads in this crisis where if the church doesn't rise to the occasion, we could be in a worse place 20 years from now than we are today because just the public will is declining to, to support and, and finance this kind of work. And so pray for, pray for the crisis as a whole, that the church would do what it needs to do, but also pray for our ministry, especially the 60 staff that every day are charging into some of the darkest places on this planet and they're at risk, uh, health risk, security risk, and they believe so strongly in this vision, they're willing to do that. So pray for that. Um, and then also, as you said, I mean, you, you're welcome to come with us to Kenya at any time because we know that not only do our staff and our clients need the encouragement of people to come in and say, hey, I've been praying for you and I believe you have infinite value and worth and I just wanna remind you of that. That's a great gift, but it also allows us to come back with a new perspective on this issue and a new perspective on the church. And I think uh, every person that I've seen come back has come back changed in some way. And then, you know, and also we're, we're doing this with the support of funds that we collect from people here in the States and in Canada. And to, to be able to continue to fund this, we believe that we've identified at least 100 communities just in Kenya and Tanzania that desperately need this type of program in their community. And so those are some ways to get involved and, um, and uh, you know, there's other ways as well. Well, thank you so much, Justin. I hope people will partner with you in prayer and if they get a chance to go with you to Africa and uh, support this great ministry. Thank you for what you're doing. Absolutely, thank you Kevin, appreciate it. Thanks.